Oh. Don't put my name on this, Ricky Bobby. Self-clearing. Oh, look at that. What's up, everybody? I'm John. I'm Charles. And today on Cars and Cameras, we are buttoning up our Megamoto 8105 Land Speed Mini Bike 2.0 to get it ready to go 120 miles an hour on an airstrip. We started with a factory fresh Megamoto Mini Bike from Go Power Sports. We added about six inches to the wheelbase. We added larger wheels and tires for stability. And now it's time to add stuff like steering damper, aerodynamics, and maybe even get some testing in at the drag strip to see just what we're in for, for our 120 mile an hour run. So let's get started. So we're gonna start things off by installing a steering damper. That's totally necessary if you're going over, I don't know, 60, 70 miles an hour on a mini bike. I think so, it's pretty sweet. Yeah, yep. it'll prevent your death wobble. We installed one on the uh, Land Speed Bike 1.0 and it was like a game changer immediately. So since I did the last one, John gave me the job of this one. Oh, huh. double whoops, double whoops. Oh crap. Okay, let's lift the let's lift the engine. Is that is that at all working? Kind of. Oh sweet. Okay. I've had you know difficult jobs here and there all my life. Nothing crazy. You know, I'm not comparing anybody else's, but one of the hardest jobs I've ever had is taking a kid in a toy store and then taking him out. Let's give them a little mock up. So through bolt there on the lower steering plate. Oh, well, a bolt longer than this, of course, welded there. I'll probably cut the head off and then uh, it'll go through that and that'll give us our pivot point. Don't get that centered up so the spot on the uh, the shock is equal. Okay, well we're just gonna do it. We're gonna do it live. Oh boy. We'll run over everything. Okay good it's not use see it's not using this uh the, the dampener for the stop so it's locked to lock okay so it's using the Let's actual it. factory stops okay so we run out of room here Oops. Oops. all right so we didn't we didn't uh take into account for this getting hit but maybe maybe i can rotate yeah, we can rotate so we might have to drop this put like a washer under that to get it uh past the the biggest point but we are almost at lock to lock so just a little bit of uh, fine tune and check out it won't hit the block <laughs> nice and we're not going to need that much steering for uh, for our run oh, whoops. I had it loose no we won't we won't need that much steering but it'd, it'd be nice that it's not like bottoming out on the actual like shock body so the steering damper is pretty much done we got full left, full right. The most important tip I have to say is make sure that you have your steering straight and your piston centered on the shock shaft when you go to install it or else you'll have more turn one way than the other. But everything looks good. It clears the engine block. Yep. And we can move on. To get our seating position as low as possible, we're building a flat seat out of a sheet of steel and bolting it directly to the chassis. We also permanently mounted our fairing and built a slider type chain tensioner. So we're happy with the chain tensioner. It was a little tricky just because we have so much distance between the chain and we need to fit kind of a wide range of sprockets on this thing. 
But now we're moving on to the exhaust. So this billet head has a different exhaust flame than Charles's. Charles is like a traditional, you know. Two bolt style. Yep, just like a good old Pilsen 212 or Predator 212 head. This one uses a pretty sweet four bolt design with an O-ring. So uh, we had to special order this flange and we just need to bolt it up and I imagine tack it on. Yeah, yeah, I wish, yeah, it, it probably is supposed to be TIG welded, but that's okay. We, we made three with the MIG welder, so yeah, we're I'm not four. worried about it. Let's do it. All right. And I was squeezing my eyes as tight as I could, and it was still blinding. Still blue. You want me to go ahead and give it one more on the under, underside? Or no? If you, if you got good access to the underside, one more tack, yeah. I'm just, I'm just trying to keep the heat off of this. Yeah. The, the, the welding heat. Yep, yep. go for one it. More. All right. Yeah, let's okay. Pop All it right. off. Yeah, we'll get that thing off there. Cool. So my job for the day is to come up with a uh, heavy-duty chain guard on this bike. We want to keep the clutch away from our feet, and we want to keep the chain from, you know, if we have any problems from coming up and slapping us on the butt, you know. So we got these scrap pieces of wood from uh, wood. wood metal. We got these scrap pieces of metal that we actually got from Go Power Sports. Uh, they they just had it laying around and they were like hooked us up with it. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna turn it into a uh, what? They literally gave us a five gallon bucket full of that metal. Yeah, thank you, Go Power Sports. I'm not saying they'll do it for y'all, but uh, so this is what I'm thinking. It's about the just the right thickness for the uh, clutch that we have here. I'm gonna make a little backing plate and then I'm gonna weld this on there. And I'm thinking about making a little little curve right here in the front of the uh, clutch because our feet sit right here and this rotating clutch danger. that is a uh, danger danger will robertson so we're going to take care of that and uh we're going to attach it to this square tubing probably a little pivot bolt our uh chain is going to actually be running through the inside of this square tubing or square pipe and uh, that's going to help keep the chain slapped down because we are pushing a lot of horsepower here. And we found out in the past with a long chain, there's going to be a lot of uh, chain slap. And that could cause it to come off the sprocket and cause an accident. And we don't want that. So that's my job today. Guys, what are y'all up to? Nothing. Just hanging out. Then die. Oh, yeah. Y'all been working on this rear I'm fender. Not, I don't, put that, don't put my name on this, Ricky Bobby. It's cool it's looking. Bad. Bad. This this looks pretty it's good. Get, this it's is, getting worked out. This it's, is the original Megamoto to this frame, and I really love how y'all are uh, keeping it with the, with the bike. And we're so. wanting, we're wanting the uh, we're wanting the fender to shield for this catch can filter. Right. And the top, and the, the, the top engine, engine or whatever. It's so. looking good though. So I'm gonna take this piece of metal and turn it into a chain guard. There we go. Beautiful, isn't it? Wow. And it's gonna go. The fastest yet. I know. It's gonna go boom right there. Uh, and that that was kind of weird, but it worked wherever it went. All right. So let's get the last bracket for the rear fender. Cover. We got a fender. Not bad. Not bad. Coming in at eight pounds, four ounces. <laughs> to the uh, chain guard. All right, yeah, I feel pretty good about my foot here. I do need to make a little cover though. I gotta do a little trimmage. I don't wanna round that off. And uh, man, it looks like a puzzle I put together. It is. But, you know, once it's on there, it's like, okay, not bad. It's well, pretty bad. Okay. It no, could it's, be. Dude, I mean. it's terrible. It's, it's, it's terrible. <laughs> I've been working on the uh, clutch cover. Charles has been working on the fuel tank. Go ahead and tell us uh, your design on this fuel All tank. All right, so we got this awesome 10-inch uh, spun aluminum fuel tank from Go Power Sports, uh, and we figured where's the best place to put it to make it look good and uh, it's kind of hard but 
this this was the uh, the best area that we could come up with and I've got uh, one bracket set up and I'm in the process of making another one let's see if I can get this in here it's kind of a And you're customizing the holder for the Absolutely. tank right yep. there, mounted to the top of the block? Yes, and it should be, yep, that should be uh, just fine now that we've got a uh, front mount and a rear, or I'm going to make the front mount and rear mount now, and uh, we'll just like, what do you think, just make the, uh, like a oh, half yeah, moon little, out of there? A little horseshoe or whatever Okay. out of that, and then we'll be able to fill it up. I like it. It looks not, good, and it fills up an empty space. Yep, and it's the right color, too. <laughs> right. So this is what I'm working on right here. So this is keeping our feet from hitting this rotating assembly here. Plus, we needed something on the front. And this is what I came up with. So let's see. Let's get that. Where's the foot pedal? Oh, yeah and it's uh, two bolted so when our feet and leg pass by here no uh I like that yeah i think it's That's pretty good. cool it's a little bit more heavy duty than i wanted but we're kind of limited with metal here <laughs> here lately i wanted something in between but uh this will work just fine i like next, it next thing i got to work on is this upper uh chain guide so that's what I'm working on next. I'm going to tack the, uh, what is it? I'm going to tack the front cradle mount for the fuel tank. Oh. One more. All right. All right, so now that these are welded, we'll hang them up, shoot some paint on them, and then get them back on the bike. Yeah, it does. That's right, that's right. It's got a show bike. Plus, it's going to go fast. Yeah. So, in order to get this thing in here, you got to mount the back one, then slide the, the front one under here. I don't know who designed this thing. Aerospace engineers, I'm sure. Yeah. I think I put... There we go. I think it's got to go the other way. I can't remember. Yep, that's it. Whoops. I built the darn thing and I forgot how it went. Well, it looks pretty secure, buddy. Oh yeah, absolutely. All right, so we found an opportunity to take this to our local drag strip for a test and tune night, which is awesome. The bad news is that we need to load the trailer in like an hour and we're also trying to bring our lawnmower. So we have a lot to do and not a lot of time to do it. The main thing being, we have never heard this engine fire. Paul had it running uh, for the big O go-kart race. And we're gonna use a very similar fuel, but we're not entirely sure what the jetting is gonna look like. So we're gonna fire it up, make sure we have idle, make sure we have wide open, and uh, make sure our bully clutch clears the chain guard, right Ike? Yeah. And uh, hit the road. Here's why I'm concerned about the bully clutch. It has these teeth here, these these pieces here that like fling oh, out as the clutch engages. Anyway, look how close that bolt is. So we might have some real live action with a $400 clutch. Self-clearing. It's gonna be fun for sprocket changes. It is fine. It is what it is. We've got it good enough for tonight um, there's gonna be some self-clearing going on. Woo, let's go 80 miles an hour. That's the spirit. Yeah, yeah, we got uh, some rubbish going on, but you know, we've run out of time. We're just gonna go ahead and get this thing off, and we're gonna test drive it here in the yard first because of safety. And uh, so jetting. Charles, huh? And see what the jetting is. Roughly. Yeah, yeah. So Charles, can you give me a hand getting this yeah. bike off? Gonna be doing some rubbing. Is that good enough, y'all? Yeah. Good thing, good thing Ike got a five-gallon bucket of uh, anti-chafing cream. There we go. Oh, oh it's man. so tiny. I hate that. Oh, look at that. Oh, wait, one more. Dude, thing is so cool looking. All right, I like it again. 
Yep. Look at that. It's made for Charles. Well, it's made for John. <laughs> and John. But I fit. I fit. I fit like it's like John fits good. You don't fit, and I'm like, eh. yeah. So. Let's fire it up. Let's hear this 236. Pull it to the fuel station. Hurry. We have the finest methanol from Sunoco Racing Fuels, one of our sponsors. And uh, we're going to fill her up. We have engine oil, correct? Yes. Good. Only thing I'm... Uh, I love these battery-powered cycles. Oh, yeah, they're pretty cool. Only thing I'm worried about is on acceleration, the fuel sloshing to the back. That's, That's a, what tonight's for. Yep. Test and tune. Well, I mean, would you, would you like me to run that hose further to the back of the bike? I can extend it. Yeah, that we, would actually okay. more fuel line. Right here, give, give me actually the, uh, if if we run it to the front, just well, I was thinking behind. Cap. I was thinking behind your face, so you don't uh -huh. get uh, methed out. Well, <laughs> don't want to lose none of my teeth. Uh, I figure we'll just go ahead and ride it real quick. And okay. Test it out. Yeah. No, I'll, I've got plenty of extra of, uh, extra fuel. So, yeah. Where's the bump box? Ready? Yep. Right. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Sounded cool. Though. I knew that straight throttle wasn't long enough. Something wasn't right with it. Flyers. Let's try this again. All right, ready? Yeah. Yeah, guys, just remember this engine makes peak power at 10,200 RPM, so it's obviously not going to do much when it's down at 3,000 and geared for 75 or 80 miles an hour right now. So uh, this is just to see if it needs any suspension or, or uh, chassis work before we attempt our 120 mile an hour run. It feels pretty good. The takeoff is horrible. Um, 
This thing's geared for like a hundred, it seems like. You said 80 something yeah. miles per hour. Dude, it feels like more than that. Uh, once it gets going, did you hear it spinning the tires yes, when I the did. engine? Uh, uh, it seems to uh, about 35, 40 miles per hour, that's when the power seems to kick in and the tires will break loose. Sweet. Yeah. So you got to be careful with it. Definitely. Yeah. Well, uh, how did the uh, jetting seem? Did it break up at all on you? Uh, wide open throttle. It doesn't. It didn't do any breaking up, but wide open throttle. Like if you gag it from a get go, it just bogs. So I think it's a little lean. But if you roll on it, phew, thing's fantastic. All right, fellas. What's going to be the ET? What's the mile an hour? All right. In the eighth mile, I'm going to say a 11.2 at 72 miles an hour. I say 920. Okay. At 78 miles per hour. All right. That thing takes off like 76. a 76. It takes off like a stock 97 cc rascals. So it better have a good back half. Is all oh. I'm saying. Did I mention that I didn't gag it out of the hole? I was just rolling on it. Oh yeah. I didn't want to burn up the clutch. Charles, you got a, a estimation or not? Uh, we go back to the future. 88 miles an hour. Well, we rushed to finish the bike to make the drag strip, and they're not doing bikes tonight. Even though I swear we've had the three-engine mini bike at this, uh, yep, this type of event. So yeah, uh, we got to figure something else out. Be right back. So after being turned away at the drag strip, we had a new plan, which was to load the bike up, take it down to Ike's place, and find a place to test it there. That's when we were hit by a surprise tropical storm. I woke up Saturday morning to uh, no power. Our buddy Peyton had wrecked his car and needed my help because he had crashed it in the rain. And I had two missed calls from Ike who had woken up, everything was fine, hopped in the shower. When he got out of the shower, there was flood water at his doorstep. So this is what he was up to. All right, guys, I give up. I'm hooking up to my trailer and I'm getting out of here. It is getting deep. I'm gonna lose. I'm gonna lose a lot of stuff. And the water's just rising. It's... It's bad. All right, so I came back to check things out because the water's starting to recede. I... Yeah, everything is just so wet. All right, so after seeing that, you can clearly understand why the mini bike was no longer our priority. Uh, we couldn't have run it even if we wanted to. You can check out the full episode on Ike's channel, Isaac. It'll be fine. I don't think it's out yet. Uh, he did have water in his house. I'm not sure the extent of the damage. I think a few cars did get flooded. The trophy cart got flooded, which we're going to be reviving on a video soon here, but uh, that makes twice now that rain has interfered with our plans to break a speed record on a mini bike so it is what it is it's a bummer but we just need to be patient and persistent and i know we'll be able to get it so at that point we brought the bike back to the cars and cameras headquarters and charles is going to paint it up and holy cow is the finished product just incredible for a megamoto 8105 i need to paint this because it kind of went through a little bit of a rainstorm don't worry the engine was covered but all the exposed metal is now surface rust. So I need to disassemble this thing, rough it up, and then blend the paint. And I, I think we're just gonna go with a black paint scheme just, just to simplify things. Uh, black, silver, and billet aluminum. So the first thing I'm going to do is to lighten the bike and take off like the most fragile stuff and, and the more expensive parts, just so when I go to pull the axles and get the tires out, if the frame falls, at least it's lighter and nothing bad will happen and I still have to paint it.
and just like that the paint is dry I had to put the heat on in the shop at like 82 degrees overnight just to get the paint to dry and of course I forgot to parts or I forgot to paint the front brake parts that are hanging right there got a little bit of work ahead of myself I'm gonna set the camera down put it on time lapse and hopefully you guys just enjoy this uh, beautiful montage of the reassembly So here we are yet again with what should be the world's fastest mini bike and we're held up by weather and scheduling yet again. Uh, we're planning on taking this thing to the Mooresville, North Carolina dragway this Thursday if they allow mini bikes and I'm waiting on a call back from them on that. So if they let us in and we make some passes, you're going to see that here on the channel. Be sure you're subscribed so you are uh, one of the first to see us break over 100 miles an hour on this mini bike. Again, we're shooting for 120 to 130, but it's all just going to depend on how much space we have to do it. I loved reading everyone's comments in the last video. You guys seem to be super into this Megamoto 8105. I gotta say, Ike did a fantastic job with the vision of, uh, of seeing the stretch through. I think it has an awesome look. And uh, we're talking to Go Power Sports about coming up with a potential kit. It's gonna be difficult because there's a lot of welding involved, but uh, we see that you guys want a kit for this and we're gonna try to come up with something. I have to say they did a fantastic job with the 10 inch aluminum wheels. They just look killer and they help take this build to the next level. I've linked all the Go Power Sports parts in the description of this video. Of course, anytime you place an order with them, let them know that Cars and Cameras send you at checkout. Pick up our new sticker pack at cars-cameras.com. Help support Cars and Cameras, help uh, improve our future builds and help us achieve our goals of, of uh, reaching over 120 miles an hour on a mini bike. That's cars-cameras.com. Pick up the sticker pack 2.0. Make sure you leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's video, and we will see you in the next one, hopefully doing some test and tune on the world's fastest land speed mini bike 2.0, part three. Catch y'all later. What's going on, everybody? It's Char What's going on, everybody? It's Charles from Cars and Cameras, and in today's episode, we're painting the land speed bike. I see where you get that from, John. All right. <laughs>